Now, Chelsea, never mind that a big boy, have brought back one of their own boys because around lunchtime, it's my understanding, we'll, we'll hear an announcement out of Chelsea that Frank Lampard uh, is indeed installed as Chelsea's interim manager uh, on uh, the basis of that until the end of the season. Nothing uh, further discussed beyond that point in time. Now, Sam, and you, I mean, Danny Murphy was in here scoffing at uh, no, Alex, I did too. Alex, Alex fair, Crooks. And fair uh, enough. We both did. We both laughed at the idea that someone would be in the stand and necessarily get a job because that would mean that everybody that goes in the stand gets a job. But the, the bottom line is it, it was right and he's he's obviously going to go in there. Well, what that was yesterday was good and accurate and sound reporting by Alex Crook. So Lampard's going to take training this afternoon. It is all but done. He's with his backroom staff at the moment and is raring to go. But yesterday you said, if Bully was to do this, it's almost laughable. Do you still stand by that? Yeah, I don't think it's forward thinking. I don't think it's a situation where uh, an owner of a football club has doubled down six weeks ago on on a manager that clearly, not just because the orthodoxy suggests that taking managers into steps like that will always end up in a particularly negative uh, outcome, but because most people with the scales off their eyes looked at Graham Potter and thought, this is not going to work. And whilst he's a great coach, this is a very different dynamic. So then you get that situation and you and you have somebody doubling down, telling you they're going to do something different. It's a longer-term project. And the solution is to take them out at a time when they can't... When the new manager, anyone coming in can't affect an outcome because the, the die's been cast, the, the, the squad's been assembled. And then you go back to somebody that's been patently unsuccessful in two incarnations... Well, three, Chelsea three didn't quite come up to it. Lampard's 84 games in charge at Chelsea brought 44 wins, 17 draws, 23 defeats. So he, he had, uh, it works out a win percentage of 52%. 52%, 52% yeah. but what, which is not what, great, but is it? Looking at it from Bully's point of view, what does he do? Bruno's in the, the dugout. Most Chelsea fans are saying, who is this fella? He came from Brighton. All right, so he's in, is he? He's in charge. Or does he bring back Lampard? who, like John Terry, is a club legend, but, who, who could galvanise that place right now at a time but, they really need unity. I'm not, I'm not sure they need galvanising, they need goals. I mean, the team... They need is, both. The team doesn't look to me like it's bereft of confidence. It looks like it's bereft of goals. If you go and play Aston Villa and well, you have... That's because of no out-and-out -out striker. Well, that's that's true. But that the, the galvanising people that can't score goals is galvanising people that can't score goals. And the bottom line is, is that Chelsea, to me, have been not that far away from winning games. Of course, losing games is losing games, and that is the trajectory that you want to stop. I look at it and say, well, great. I mean, Frank Lampard wasn't successful at Chelsea. He had a decent first season, lost the FA Cup final that they perhaps should have won, um, got his head... Um, the myth was that they didn't get any players in well they had a pretty strong squad anyway and they've signed Pulisic and paid for him during that transfer embargo and and you then get to the second season and it wasn't good enough and it wasn't good enough in terms of the performance of the team uh, the style of their play and the outcomes they were getting so he got he got fired for perfectly reasonable reasons at the time I felt it was a little unkind because he'd been given a brief with the fact that he'd been given younger players but the more you look into it post the event the less impressive it became he went to Everton and they stayed up because there were two, three worst sides of them in the division, not because of wonderful management. And then with due respect to Frank, they were poor, 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 poor. Mm. So that if, if that's the blueprint for an iconic, elite, £2.5 billion football club to solve a problem, is to go back to somebody that they need to galvanise a fan base with, then there's something lacking in their thinking. They should be after a manager... They should know well, who they, they are, want, they? and they should get him. Yeah, they should get him. What well, get him now? Well, yeah, why not? What's you know, time waits for no man. What's the purpose of waiting for something if you know what you want? Why give yourself a conundrum by waiting for someone else to potentially to leap in? Why don't you nail the person to the wall? I know that employing football managers like nailing jellies to the wall in the first place, but why, as a football club that has unlimited financial and economic power? Don't you just go, bang, this is who I want. This is the reasons why I want them. I'm going to get rid of this situation that I've made a mistake on. I'm going to, I'm going to supersede it with an elite blue chip manager, whoever that may well be, whether it's Nagelsmann because he's won the, uh, the, you know, the Bundesliga or whether it's XYZ other person that you have in your mind, Luis Enrique. But to me, it's lightweight, populist thinking. What's it like? what, what, what does it add up to for Frank? For Frank Lampard, what does it add up to at the moment? Is it a good move for him to come back into the limelight in surroundings very familiar to him? Well, given the bar so low, 
I think there's little to be lost for Frank Lampard in this. Now, if he's happy to be a gun for hire for five minutes and a stopgap under the auspice of maybe he can nick a Champions League, if he gets his head handed to him by Real Madrid in the Champions League, that little myth of following the Roberto de Matteo uh, uh, blueprint, which got Roberto Di Matteo precisely nowhere in his managerial career in the longer game, mm. then that will be debunked. I mean, everybody's getting their heads handed to them by Real Madrid, Barcelona, as, as well, recently as last night. Well, I think I just think it's lazy. I think it's lazy, formulaic, unin- uninspired. By Bowley. By Bowley, yeah, I do. And, and I think for Frank Lampard, you're a lucky boy. You've got an opportunity out of the ether. This is what the football world does, is it repackages people that are ultimately failed in one guise and puts them back into another opportunity, and it's perplexing to me. Okay. Because there's no... In, there's no, there's no, you know... I'm, I'm, one thing I'm glad is they didn't, they didn't alight upon people like Benitez. Couldn't have that in, in my locker. But look, Frank has, has, has very little to lose from this besides the fact that if it gets worse for Chelsea, then, then an element of, um, of Frank's uh, luster with the Chelsea fans might be tarnished. He's prepared to take that risk. I'm assuming there's a big financial incentive for him being there. I'm assuming that some way or another, the assumption is it'll get better. It's difficult to see if Chelsea aren't winning games and not scoring goals, how it could get much worse. Well, there is that. So with that in mind, Frank probably figures, in, yeah. insofar as I can speak for him, that there's very little... It's a zero-sum game. In fact, it's more than a zero-sum game. There's, 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 a, there's a benefit in him. He can only get one degree of benefit out of it rather than two degrees of loss. Well, I mean, the, the only way is up, isn't it? That at Wolves next, um, Chelsea sit this morning in 11th position in the Premier League. Who could have thought that? They've won 10 in 29. And the, the way I see it, Simon, is they're bringing back in one of their own. The, the, it, the bowling, quite clearly, is trying to get everybody on board in the short-term basis. And they see Lampard as a man. I mean, it's not rocket science. What it isn't is laughable. He might well, just... I he I, might I think just I think yeah, but you might be laughing on the other side of your face if he gets three wins in the trot. But, but that's if he fine. does something against Real Madrid. But that's fine. That's the risk you take by having right. an opinion. If you've got the courage of your convictions to voice an opinion, most people sit on the fence and say very little. I'll stand by the perspective True. that I'll go with the fact that I don't think it's an inspirational appointment. I don't think it's a forward-thinking appointment. I do think the manner in which it's manifested itself is laughable. And I do think potentially that the, the way that Chelsea are being looked at through certain prisms will be be, this is not a, this is not a great appointment this is not a two and a half billion we're not screwing around let's rock and roll appointment yeah this is somebody going i'll tell you what i'll do uh oh i might be falling foul of the fans well you're only falling foul of the fans because you put the wrong manager in place you can't fall foul of the fans because you saved the bleeding club you can't fall foul of the fans because you spent 600 million pound on it so why don't yeah. you double down and have the courage of your convictions rather than take the actually, in view. the middle of the day we expect some kind of statement from chelsea it'll be interesting to pick through the bones of that to get a, a clue or two as to why bully is doing what he is doing what is he doing he's brought back frank lampard frank will take training this afternoon thereafter will take the team from this point onwards but putting your allegiances aside and maybe this is really to the real chelsea diehards this morning what's your honest thought in this where is bully's head in this is a method in it if so what is the method and do you back bully's decision frank lampard back all but back in the hot seat at Chelsea. A seat that he held before he uh, disappeared, as has Graham Potter. 03717 22334810 Thursday morning, lots going on. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.